Everybody knows that Manchester United need a pure goal scorer this summer. A true world-class number nine. That is one of the missing pieces from this Eric Ten Hag team, which has progressed so well over these, this season, but needs more, needs goals, needs someone, you could argue, like Harry Kane. Now, in this video, I want to highlight my problem with Man United bidding for Harry Kane and Man United going after Harry Kane. And spoiler alert, it's got absolutely nothing to do with his age. So make sure you do stick around for the next 10 minutes because I want you to have a listen to what I've got to say and I really want to know what you think about it in the comments below because I think it's a very interesting debate that's going to have to go around United fans because you have to talk about Harry Kane, right? When it comes to goal scorers in the Premier League, there aren't many that have been better over the last 10 years. He has been prolific for Spurs, even at Spurs when they've been abysmal at times. He wants to become the all-time record goal scorer for the Premier League. He's over 200 at the moment. And odds are, if he stays inside England and he stays in the Premier League, he will definitely get that. Now, Harry Kane has flirted previously with leaving Spurs. No more so than that summer where it, all, where it looked guaranteed that he was going to be joining City. Only for it to not happen. And for him to stay at Spurs. Now, that could well happen again this summer. Kane being linked with United. And all of a sudden, staying at Spurs. Now, when it comes to Kane, I think the Van Persie comparisons are fair in the idea that Man United, we're doing well in the league, but what are we missing? A goal scorer. What do we do? We go out and sign one of the best in the league. When we sign Van Persie, we lost the league on goal difference. We go out and sign Robin Van Persie. We were in the league. Now, I'm not saying the same thing would happen if Man United were to sign Harry Kane, but I think that's what a lot of people look at Harry Kane as, that guarantee of goals, that Premier League experience he is the man who can come in and pretty much guarantee you 20 goals in the premier league for the next two three years and that's exactly what eric ten Hag needs however there are in my opinion a few problems when it comes to harry kane and man united bidding for him number one is of course daniel levy <clears throat> he's never been an easy man to deal with everybody is aware of that and something has happened clearly this week, which uh, when it comes to briefing the press, you, when when one reliable journalist comes out and says something, you take notice. When they all say it at the same time, you know that something's been said behind the scenes. So clearly this week, Spurs have been briefing the press that they are absolutely determined. There's a big word that we keep, not a big word, pretty average word. A word that we keep seeing being used this week from David Ornstein here. Tottenham determined to keep extend Harry Kane's contract. Fabrizio Romano saying the same thing. They still absolutely intend to keep Harry Kane and offer him a new deal. And Melissa Reddy from Sky Sports. Tottenham are unwilling to sell Harry Kane in the summer. <clears throat> now, of course, his deal runs out next summer. So if Spurs were to hold on to him, they could lose him for free next summer. But Spurs, apologies about the camera there. My camera's playing up, so it might go a bit skew with a couple of times this video. But I'm still here, all right? Spurs want to hold on to Kane. And from everything we've seen so far in his career, Kane wants to hold on to Spurs. And another big reason why I would say that there is a problem with going after Kane, Antonio Conte is about to be sacked. And I personally will be very surprised if it's not Maurizio Pochettino who comes in to replace him and for that link up to happen again. Now, Kane has stayed at Spurs throughout this whole time, let alone if Pochettino comes back in town. So whether it comes to the concerns that everybody should rightly have of dealing with Daniel Levy, whether it comes to the fact that we're hearing that Spurs have no intention of selling him from all the main journalists, or whether you think that it's the Poch factor, there are serious reasons to be concerned about dealing with Spurs this summer. Because when it comes to buying or selling players, we learned the hard way through that Frankie de Jong deal. And this is ultimately my big problem here with signing Harry Kane. Because I'm looking at red flags galore when it comes to what could happen and how difficult this process could be when it comes to trying to sign Harry Kane. Now, with the Frankie de Jong situation, it was something which shaped our transfer window last summer. Well, overall, I think Man United had a good summer transfer window in terms of who we signed. However, from an operational perspective, we were abysmal. And it might be boring to say, but it's completely and utterly the truth. Because what happened 
because Man United were chasing Frankie de Jong all summer long. We all thought we would get him. Barcelona constantly said no. He said he was happy at Barcelona. What transpired? He stayed at Barcelona and seemed happier than ever. That's what he's saying anyway. Man United went into the season unprepared. We lost against Brighton. We lost against Brentford. <clears throat> it was the worst possible start for Eric Ten Hag. What happened as a consequence of that? Man United found 150 million down the back of the sofa. We signed Casemiro from Real Madrid for 70 mil. And we signed Anthony from Ajax for what? 80 plus mil? There or thereabouts. But our transfer business was completely hampered and stalled by our failed chase of Frankie de Jong. And for me, looking at it from the outside in right now, I think this Harry Kane situation could develop to the exact same point where we could chase Harry Kane all summer long. He's flirting with us. Ah, we'll see what happens. Spurs are interested in selling at the right price. But everything we're seeing is that Spurs do not intend to sell. They intend to take that risk and they may well lose Harry Kane on a free transfer. In January, he could talk to Bayern Munich and sign a pre-contract agreement. Maybe in the summer, something could happen. But Harry Kane, Eric Ten Hag needs a goal scorer. Everybody knows that, right? Veghorst is not good enough to be our starting number nine in this rebuild, this new look Manchester United team. He is a stopgap that's done a job, and I think he could be a good squad player next year. Nothing more than that. And that's not an offensive thing to say. It's a reality. Eric Ten Hag needs that striker. And when it comes to Harry Kane and the other options, this is where it gets, in my opinion, more interesting. Because you've got Victor Rosserman, right? Who, if we're looking at probably the two names who are atop the list and the arguments and debates surround, it's Harry Kane and it's Victor Rosserman. Who is the better option? Now, I'm actually going to do scouting videos. I'm going to do it in depth. I really apologize about the camera, by the way. I need to try and get it fixed after this. But you can still hear me, right? That's a good thing. Victor Rosserman, he wants to play in the Premier League. He has spoken about his dream of playing in the Premier League. And once he's won, by the looks of things, once he's won the Serie A title with Napoli, hell, maybe they can even go on and win the Champions League. If you could do that and stop City doing it, that'd be nice. I would appreciate that. But Victor Rosserman, he wants to move in the summer. Napoli will sell their asset in the summer. That's a deal that can be done. And then you move along to, to Gonzalo Ramos. It's going to be expensive, but the deal will be done. There will be a willingness to negotiate there. And when it comes to this summer, it's just that we cannot afford to operate in the same way we operated last summer. It was a problem. I, we all, I, 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 I don't begrudge United going after Frankie de Jong. I think we can all, maybe with hindsight, say that we went after it just that little bit too long. That we should have accepted. And you know what? Nah, man. Frankie de Jong is staying there. Let's move somewhere else. And it shouldn't have taken these two defeats to Brighton and Brentford to make United go, oh, actually, yeah, we, we, have, oh, yeah, we, have, got, we have got money. Yeah, we'll, we'll sign. Who do you want, Eric? Oh, yeah, okay. We'll get Casemiro instead. It should have happened earlier. And it was something that really took all the preparation possibilities away for Eric Ten Hag. And got off to the wrong, the worst possible start. We cannot afford to do that this summer. We cannot afford a repeat of the of an Eric Ten Hag and Frankie de Jong situation. And for me, for what I'm seeing, this Harry Kane possibility is heading towards that path. With Daniel Levy in charge, he won't be cheap. No, this isn't a case of talking about his age or or what he's got ahead of him or X Y Z. This is simply talking about how easy or difficult it would be to complete that transfer. If Spurs have an unwillingness to sell, and that's what we're hearing from David Ornstein, from Fabrizio Romano, from Melissa Reddy, and if Spurs get potched back, which is a possibility, but Conte leaving, I'd say is a definite, then that's another reason for Harry Kane to stay. I don't begrudge him for wanting to stay at one club. You know, we all talk about loyalty being dead in football. That's not what I'm... I'm not, I'm not angry about anything. It's just I've got a problem with the idea that Manchester United could well find ourselves in a Frankie de Jong V2. We can't afford to do that. We've got to get our business done early. And if that means maybe slightly overpaying for someone like Victor Rosserman here, maybe slightly overpaying for someone like Gonzalo Ramos and making sure we get it done, then we need to get it done. I need to get this camera fixed. I'm sure you've heard everything I've said. You may not have seen it all. But you let me know what you think about this. Do you have the same problem with the idea of signing Harry Kane? Or am I going overboard? 